I am Chris Kaler and I'm Amber Francois Kajin Gosley and today we are back with you guys with Demon Slayer episode 12. What happened in the last episode? We uh, were on our way to another mission uh, with a, a new guy called Zenitsu who well, is a crybaby. <laughs> yeah. Gosh, he's so afraid of dying that he freaks out every time there's danger. Even when there's not danger, he freaks out. It's it's funny to see, a bit annoying, but it's at least it's funny. Yeah, it's a bit over too much. Yes, but then uh, together they went and they met uh, two children whose brother was kidnapped by a monster, a demon, and brought into a house, and they went in to save him. The, kid, the kids followed, so the kids are in there with them, and they met the demon. The demon has a uh, ta ta tamari? Tama... Ta -ta -ta -ta. Anyway, he's got like uh, drums on his body, and whenever he, you know, taps one of them, the house changes. Rooms change uh, places, or just the rooms change themselves, or they switch sides. Yeah. So, very interesting, and then another fighter came in, because now we've got basically Zenitsu, who is lost somewhere with the, <laughs> the kid brother, yeah. Tanjiro, who's lost somewhere with the kid's sister, facing the demon, and then the guy with the boar head, who I think is called Inosuke, just showed up with two badass swords, <laughs> ready to kick <laughs> some ass! Yeah, and we got our poor little Nezuko staying outside. Yes! Running for night time, so... So, um... Let's we're <laughs> jump in it, guys! Exactly, let's go! Those shonen speeches, <laughs> I swear! Those shonen speeches, he's one of the best at them, you know? Yeah. Motivation! I love motivation speeches. Oh, that's cool. So that's really nice. And it's something he has to learn too, you know, because it, we are, you know, halfway through the first season, but his journey is far yeah, from almost. over. And the thing is, he will get hurt in the future. And he won't always have someone around to save him. And when your life depends on it, you gotta push through the pain. If you, you know, let your injuries, or you know, I, I'll actually use Zenitsu as, a, as an example, but his fear is paralyzing him. If it wasn't for the sleepwalking thing, he'd be dead. True. So he's letting, you know, his fears and his, his uh, well, yeah, his fears stop him and, and give him a handicap so he cannot fight. And that's gonna be the, the death of him. Just like Tanjiro, he needs to learn to push through whenever he's got, you know, something like a wound or, you know, whenever someone hurt his feelings or he's got a lack of motivation or he doesn't believe in his uh, capacities enough because he's, a, he's facing a strong opponent that he doesn't think he can defeat. He really needs to, that's part of being a warrior, that's mm -hmm. something we see a lot in movies, you know, you gotta try to push through. Motivation and determination makes for Thank half the fight. Exactly. Yeah. You know, uh, it's not the same, but I remember when I used to play badminton uh, and do tournaments and stuff, and I remember I used to play with a friend of mine who lacked confidence, you know, lacked self-esteem, and, and she just thought she was so bad at this game. So whenever we had a tournament and she had to play alone, she would just lose straight up, you know, on the account, you know, just because she didn't believe in herself. And then I wasn't... <laughs> That's our cat. You okay, sweetie? I think he, uh... <laughs> Bee -bee. <It's> good. Judge. <laughs> Are you, are you done? <laughs> Did you finish? <laughs> we're moving soon, so we're making boxes and stuff, and we're uh, kind of, you know, tossing uh, material from, from that we haven't touched in years, yeah, so there's so a lot there's of uh, dust. dust everywhere. <laughs> and yeah, that was well, John. And anyway, so basically, <laughs> I had a friend who had really poor self esteem, and she basically. She she thought before she even got onto you know on, on the court she thought she was gonna lose you know and that's that's basically what contributed to her losing all these games and then I remember I wasn't that good when I played tournaments but then when I went to college and played badminton there with people with with you know a bunch of people who never played I had the confidence that you know someone taught me how to play the game I did tournaments before and so. 
I had the confidence that I could win these games and it did have the work for me. I could just picture myself trying to win these games and and it would happen. Even when I was facing, you know, actual strong opponents, actual people who actually did the work. Jesus Christ, baby. <laughs> Are you alright? Huh? He's okay. He's you alright? <laughs> He's alright. So, you know, believing in yourself and believing that you can do it and that you can win this is usually half have the job. It's true that when I when I you know my example doesn't fit completely with this because when I'm on the court playing badminton it's not like me trying to forget that I have two broken ribs and and you know twisted ankle or anything but well, it helps. You know what? I can think that example for one of my own matches that I had when I was playing badminton. It was uh, the finale for my category and I was tired. I wasn't really strong back then when I was playing badminton and it was just uh, uh, hitting the... No one was doing any, was making any points? No one was making any advancement during the match. It was her side and my side and basically you were on the side. It was like, come on, you can do it. It's been a long time. but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but some of our teammates were screaming me too. Come on, you can do it. Do something about it. But still, I wasn't really strong back then, so I was mostly just hitting through sheer will and trying to do some points. And I finally won my match, but I had to just pull, uh, push, through. push through it, uh, through it. Yeah, through the fatigue, through the the hurt. Basically, tell yourself that if you start thinking that, oh, you're too tired and if eventually you're going to lose anyway, so what's the point? Then, of course, you're going you're gonna to lose. But if you start to think that you might just gave up, it's... It's over. It's over. So, motivation and, you know, self, you know, self-confidence and, and drive can do a lot in a mm -hmm. fight or in a match or in any competition. And I love that Tanjiro is going through these motions because he's going to basically keep facing stronger and stronger, stronger opponents and it's never going to be easy. And whenever, you know, he basically has to fight for his life after a huge battle, he's going to be tired, he's going to be hurt, and he's going to have to learn how to push through and not let everything push him down. That's how you become stronger. That's how you are the main character of a shonen. True. Uh, <laughs> regarding Zenitsu. Oh God! <laughs> it's that somebody force him to do this training and force him to do uh, the selection. But that's the thing. Why that fits. person knew that when he was asleep, it was somebody else? Well, I don't think he's somebody else. Like we don't know enough about him yet to just say it with confidence. But I feel like it fits with what we just said about Tanjiro. You know how self confidence and you know uh, drive makes up for half the battle. The thing is, when he's awake. All his fears basically crushes him, so he lets him, he lets them basically stop him in a fight. It paralyzes him. But then when he's asleep, he's got no fear, he's got no uh, lack of confidence. He's basically just a blank sheet, and all, and his body has muscle memory. I think he remembers everything that he's he's trained for, everything that he's learned, and he just reacts. What's interesting is, like, he reacts in a way that is very unnatural, so that, I don't really understand how that's possible. Because, how I saw it, it reminded me of uh, a book series that we used to read when we were in high school, like, uh, Ariel Queen. Yeah. Basically, the main plot is, uh, the main character, when she was asleep, had an alter ego, and that character was basically everything that she wasn't. She was more confident, she was more pretty, if you want to say. She was stronger, and she yeah. was faster. And that case, it reminds me of that, basically. Yeah, but in Ariel Queen, the, the body is awake, you know? He still had his eyes closed. I actually think it, it'd be better if it was still Zen Zenitsu. It's just that without his fears, without basically uh, all the stuff that paralyzes him when he's awake, it's actually the same guy. It's just that he doesn't have the blockage that he's got when he's awake. So he is that strong like and he's conscious. Exactly. He is that strong and he could kick some ass if you you know awake if he wanted. It's just that he's letting the fear stop him. Mm -hmm. But he's got so much potential. I actually prefer it this way than just <laughs> him being two people. Like I don't think no, that's I don't I don't think that he's two people per se. I just think that is well in his own mind you can't say he's two people. When he's awake his fear overtake, overtakes him. Oh, he's the so same person. It's just without the fear. 
but that's it. But it's really, really, it's really different from when he's uh, awake, though. Yes, because he fears when he's awake. I know that. <laughs> anyway, it's, it's, we're seeing the same thing, just very differently. That's it. And I love that compared to the two of them, we've got uh, the, the boar guy, Inosuke, I think, again. And uh, he's the complete opposite, if you think about it. He doesn't have to think about a drive or, you know, or he doesn't have to push himself. He wants to go to go there. You know, he wants <laughs> to to twist fate and, to, and, and you know, start fights it's he created his own style no one like it's almost like everything went against him and he basically said fuck it i'm creating like my own thing if no one is about to teach me he wants to i don't know if his drive is to kill demons or if it's just to fight well he but... did try to fight tanjiro exactly they so have... i think he's just willing to fight stronger opponents so maybe he thinks that humans are too weak to face him and he want that's why he goes against demons but uh, in his case, he literally just invented his own style. Like, he sees himself as a beast. And I think he can back it up. You know, it's not like he's, you know, saying he's the strongest, but he can't, you know, prove it. He actually backs it up. He killed that demon in a second with a style that's not even an, an official style, with a sword that's not an... Well, technically, I think it could be official because he did kill that demon True. with it. But uh, he didn't go, I don't think he went to the, through the selection, he's not a demon slayer, he didn't do things normally, so he's not an official killer, <laughs> but he still pushes through, so that's yeah. pretty badass. <laughs> I think uh, the three of them together are very similar, yet very different. Mm -hmm. They would complement each other very well. And I just, like, I'm wishing for Zenitsu to do that character development eventually, where he's going to be able to be just as badass awake than he is asleep. I want to learn more about Inosuke. I, I sure hope it's his name because if it's not, that's going to sound really weird. Yeah. But uh, I, I kind of want to learn about his past, about how he got there and why. And I'm, I'm so ready for Tanjiro to kill that third demon. Huh. He's such a big brother. Like, that's the huge difference between how uh, Tanjiro used to you know, deal with the little girl and how Zenitsu dealt with the brother. When you are the strongest in the room, you know, when you are the leader or the figure that's supposed to show the way, yeah. they drink your emotions, you know, they look up to you and they imitate you. If you show fear, even though, like, that's the thing with Tanjiro, he was saying at, at the end that he was really hurt and he was trying to hide it and stuff and we didn't see any of it. Like, he said he was hurt, but we kind of forgot about it right away because he doesn't show it. And that's the thing. When you're the strongest in a room you and people are scared, you cannot show fear, weakness, or a lack of confidence because they will basically imitate you. So he did it very well. He's a big brother. He's used to, mm -hmm. you know, taking care of, of, of his siblings. So he's got that. You could also say that we saw the same thing, but in reverse with Zenitsu and the other yeah, brother. Because Zenitsu was so scared and anxious that the little guy became just the same. Yeah. He was even scared to just hear his name. But at the, at the same time, we also saw that Zenitsu is not, he's not a bad guy. You know, he still tried to take that kid away. He told him to leave him behind, you know. So he's a good guy. He's just paralyzed by fear. But uh, yeah, he it did show. And it his knees, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he did show that the contrary to what was actually the right thing to do with Tanjiro, he did the, he did the complete opposite. But uh, it's cool. Very emotional, very easy to uh, pump us up and get us ready for the next episode. <laughs> All right. So thank you guys so much for watching this with us. If you want to see the next episode right away, it is already on Patreon. You can check it out. The link is in the description. Yeah, so don't forget to subscribe for and watch it now, guys. And if not, for the next one to be out on YouTube, which will be next week. Yes. So we're going to see you then. Bye. Bye, guys.